this is Dazzling One, and this week's discussion is on Winged Men and Fallen Angels. And I've had the pleasure of reading The Mothman Prophecies by John A. Kill, and as I was reading the third chapter, I couldn't help but think of an idea for a video. So I want to talk a little bit about some excerpts from the book, as well as share a recent paranormal experience that I had. He starts the chapter by talking about a winged entity that was sighted in Coney Island between 1877 and 80. And I'll go ahead and read the excerpt. This flying man became a local sensation and according to the New York Times, September 12, 1880, many reputable persons saw him as he was engaged in flying toward New Jersey. He maneuvered at an altitude of about 1,000 feet, sporting bat's wings and making swimming-like movements. Witnesses claimed to have seen his face clearly. He wore a cruel and determined expression. The entire figure was black, standing out sharply against the clear blue sky, since he wasn't towing an advertising sign behind him. And then the primitive gliders of experimenters during this period traveled far, and then usually downhill. This incident was without explanation. So I found that interesting because when I went to actually look up this, I saw that some paranormal sites referenced him as the Airborne Frogman, and described exactly what Kill was talking about with a cruel expression and bat-like wings. find it interesting that, that the New York Times actually reported on it. Another instance of a winged man that he referenced was on July 11th, 1908, by a famous Russian traveler, V.K. Arsenev, who was trekking along the Gobili River when he had this encounter. I saw a mark on the path that was very similar to a man's footprint. My dog Alpha bristled up, snarled, and then something rushed about nearby, trampling among the bushes. However, it didn't go away, but stopped nearby, standing stock still. We had been standing like that for some minutes. Then I stopped, picked up a stone, and threw it towards the unknown animal. Then something happened that was quite unexpected. I heard the beating of wings. Something large and dark emerged from the fog and flew over the river. A moment later, it disappeared into the dense mist. My dog, badly frightened, pressed itself against my feet. After supper, I told the Udahe men about the incident. They broke into a vivid story about a man who could fly in the air. Hunters often saw his tracks, tracks that appeared suddenly and vanished suddenly, in such a way that they could only be possible if the man alighted on the ground, then took off again into the air. This is interesting because in 1980, so almost a hundred years later, there was a figure described as bat squatch in the Mount St. Helens region. And bat squatch is a flying cryptid that resembles a flying primate, similar to the ahul and the orange batty of Southeast Asia. It's named as a horomat to derive from the words bat and sasquatch. A witness allegedly took several pictures of the creature. However, these pictures have not been yet analyzed and thus cannot prove the creature's existence. This creature has said to have yellow eyes, a wolf-like muzzle, blue tinted fur, sharp teeth, bird-like feet, and leathery bat-like wings that span up to 50 feet. In addition, bat squatch is said to be nine feet tall. So the interesting thing about bat squatch is that like Mothman, it's said to be able to affect cars and motors. And Kill also goes on to talk about in his book that in Mexico, there are stories of the Ecals, tiny black men endowed with, with the power of flight, who live in caves and kidnap humans. In India, the giant bird known as the Garuda is an important part of the mythology. The gods Vishnu and Krishna traveled around the heavens on the back of a great Garuda. North American Indians have extensive legends about the Thunderbird, a huge bird said to carry off children and old people. It was accompanied by loud noises, hums, buzzes, and apparently rumbles from the infrasonic and ultrasonic levels, known as Paisa. It's the Indians of the Dakotas. It was supposed to have terrifying red eyes and a long tail. Something else interesting that's referenced by Kill is he talks about how these bird-like figures or Garudas that he likens them to seem to have a luminous phenomena. They tend to appear in areas where UFOs have been active, and like UFOs, they tend to linger for days or even weeks in the same specific area. The big luminous bird of the Illinois-St. Louis region in 1948 was visiting an area of the Mississippi Valley that would see continuous UFOs and hairy monster activity thereafter. In many instances, the witnesses have clearly seen objects in the process of materialization or dematerialization, the glow that is observed first, usually a reddish glow marking the emergence of the object from the invisible band of the spectrum into the infrared, and then into narrow bands of visible light, 
or if the object is passing through the visible bands of the higher frequency, it's cyan, bluish green, before it fades into blue, hard to see at night, and then enters the ultraviolet range. The chills experienced by John Flaxton and his group were probably caused by microwaves above the infrared, which produces heat, just as the very cold atmosphere accompanying ghosts is a radiation effect. The absence of an overpowering odor, either sickly sweet like violets or roses, or nauseous like hydrogen sulfide, in these birds and Batman cases puzzle me. However, this could indicate some subtle differences in the basic structure of these creatures, a difference in the energy components or the molecular structure. I find this really interesting that these figures seem to appear around the same time that UFOs do. And the reason why I find this interesting is because you have a lot of legends about light orbs as well. And I've talked about this before on the channel, but my father often talked about how the part of Mexico, he's from central Mexico, that they believe that there were these vampiric witches that could shapeshift into birds and they would drink the blood of infants. And what's interesting about this is that there were some doctors who actually had reports of children who had had their blood drained and the locals explanation was that one of the witches had got to them and interestingly enough about these witches they would have a type of aura around them and my father claims that he actually knew people who had lost children due to blood loss from this very phenomenon. I believe that these winged men are nothing more than the same fallen angels who pose and can shapeshift, and this is why I believe why they come in different forms. Some of them look more man-like, some look more like birds, some look like primates that they walk among us to this day. Also, at the start of 2017, in January, in the Phoenix, Arizona area, there was a picture that went viral of a winged entity. Now, paranormal enthusiasts will say that it's proof of an angel or demon or something otherworldly, while skeptics will say that it looks like a palm tree. You be the judge of this picture. But I find it all very fascinating because I do believe that we are not alone, and I do believe in what the Bible says about there being a spiritual realm. And even though it's invisible to our naked eye, it does not mean that it does not exist. I promised you that I'd share a paranormal experience that I had recently, and... It's more of a testimony. This month has been really rough for me, and I thank you all for pouring out your prayers, and things have gotten somewhat better from the start of the month, but towards the beginning, I had a case of sleep paralysis, and I haven't had sleep paralysis for several months, so I've been doing really well. So I woke up, and I heard a strange buzzing noise and I immediately started to pray because I realized I was paralyzed. At first I thought, what the heck is this ringing noise? And then it stopped and I turned over and as soon as I turned over, I was paralyzed again. So I start praying and in that process of being paralyzed, I kid you not, I felt a feather-like wing on my shoulder. I knew that this wing was not a good heavenly angel, but either a fallen angel or the wing of a demon. And it's interesting because that very same day, I had shared the scripture, Psalms 91, 4, which is, He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. And so what I find interesting is that I had this demonic or fallen wing on my shoulder mocking me as I was being attacked. And it even told me telepathically that where is God? If God really cared, why am I allowed to torment you? And I prayed and I felt as if this being was mocking the fact that I had shared that scripture and said it was one of my favorite verses. And so after I prayed, I felt myself released and it went away. And I'm so thankful that I cried out to Yeshua and he heard my cry. But after that incident, just in my regular day-to-day -day life, I noticed just I was feeling very stressed. Depression kept trying to hit me. I was getting daily tension headaches. And last Friday on the 27th, I actually got so upset. I just felt like I was just dying inside. Just, just didn't want to even continue on another day in the kind of pain that I was in. And I remember my mother seeing me and praying for me. And I remember that night I was just 
going through so much psychological and emotional torment. And a lot of this has to do with things that have happened in the past and things that have happened recently to trigger it, but still, I was just under so much torment. I remember praying and again, I could hear the voices telling me that, where is God now? Why is he allowing you to suffer? If he really loved you, he would deliver you like all these other people that get delivered so easily. And I remember that night, I just felt like my whole body was just in such pain, like my rib cage hurt. I actually saw bruises on my ribs. It was just so much torment. And I remember choosing to pray and praise God in the midst of that storm and the next day I woke up and I just felt like a weight had been lifted off me like whatever was oppressing me was gone and I just thank Yahweh for delivering me from that demonic oppression and I just want to use that to encourage many of you who constantly contact me about being under severe demonic oppression or in some severe cases possession that there is deliverance and that we don't have to be afraid of these wicked entities that prey upon us and try to feed off of our life force. But I thought it was very timely to share that with you given the fact that I talked about winged entities. And I've also been a bit sick the last month as well, so I'm sorry if my voice throughout this video has been kind of weak or off. I hope that you all have a wonderful week. Take care and God bless you.